Welcome back. In this video, what we're going to do is we're going to take a talk a about limits involving infinity. And the limits involving infinity, what we're going to also do is we're going to connect this to our asymptotes, which you may be familiar with from last year and also from Algebra 2. Um, and so what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at what happens when both x goes to infinity and negative infinity. And then we're also going to take a look at what's going to happen when, let's say you have a rational function and you have a vertical asymptote at 2. <coughs> what happens when you approach 2 from the left-hand side and from the right-hand side? One of the things that people get confused on is when do they say it goes to infinity and when do they say it does not exist. And I'll try to clarify for you that in the video, uh, or, or that in this video along the way. So first of all, let's take a look at what happens if I have something like 1 over x minus 2. So if f of x equals 1 over x minus 2, then remember what that graph looks like. Let me just kind of sketch it real quick. I won't, won't take long to do this. Come on. Come on. There we go. And we have a vertical asymptote, remember, at, at 2. And we have a horizontal asymptote on the y axis, excuse me, on the x-axis at y equals 0. And if I sketch this graph, it looks something like this. And really, this is kind of um, a good summary for the whole lesson. I mean, you know, the graphs get a little bit more complex, but it really just is a really good summary for the whole lesson. So first of all, what I want to do is I want to take a limit. I want to find the limit as x approaches 2. And I can't necessarily just look at when x is approaching 2. I have to talk about when it's approaching 2 from the left-hand side and from the right-hand side. So I'm going to clarify. So let's do from the left-hand side. So we'll do a superscript with a negative of f of x. And what happens as I approach 2 from the left-hand side, this graph goes down without bound. So we would say this goes to negative infinity. If I approach the limit <coughs> as x approaches 2 from the right-hand side of f of x, then I'm going this way. And I'm growing without bound. And as I'm growing without bound, this is going to positive infinity. If I were to ask you the question simply, the limit as x approaches 2 of f of x, if we go back from our previous video where I was taking a look at limits as I sided limits as I go to left side or right side, remember I defined a limit as these have to be the same. If they're not the same, then this limit does not exist. So even though these are growing to a concept, we would say this does not exist because these are not the same. One goes to negative infinity, one goes to positive infinity. The other things we can look at in this problem is we can talk about, okay, well, x grows without bound out here to positive infinity, what you call in algebra 2 your right-end behavior, and the limit as x approaches negative infinity, what you call in algebra 2 your left-end behavior. These are our horizontal asymptotes, and oftentimes the graphs will cross our horizontal asymptotes, but they're talking about where is the graph approaching as the x value gets very large or x value gets very small. And so I would take the limit and we'd write it as the limit as x approaches positive infinity. That's my right end behavior of f of x. And what we say is this converges down to 0. Remember the rule from Algebra 2 is that if the power in the denominator is larger than the power in the numerator, that horizontal asymptote is at 0. If I take the limit as x approaches negative infinity of f of x, that's also 0. Because again, those horizontal asymptotes are the same. Um, technically, what you do in these problems is you divide by the highest power in the denominator. Um, I'll, I'll do that in my next example, and I'll also talk you through kind of the rules on those horizontal asymptotes. Let's say we have something like this. Let's say we have an example where um, sorry, I just want to make sure a good one here. Let's say we have <coughs> the limit as x approaches negative infinity. And let's do 2x squared minus 5 over 3x squared um, plus x plus 2. <coughs> and let's talk about <clears throat> just evaluating that limit as it approaches negative infinity. Um, a couple different ways you can go about this. If you remember from Algebra 2, 
In Algebra 2, as I took a look at left-hand limits and right-hand limits, or horizontal asymptotes, if I looked at the powers of both the numerator and denominator, if the powers are equal to each other, as in this case situation right here, then my horizontal asymptote is simply the ratio of their leading coefficients are two-thirds. So this limit as x approaches negative infinity is two-thirds if you remember that rule. If you go, the, technically, the most correct way of doing that in calculus is what I want to do is I want to divide everything by the highest power in the denominator. When I divide by the highest power in the denominator, in this case x squared, on top, if I divide that by x squared, I get 2 minus 5 over x squared over, on the bottom I get 3 plus 1 over x plus 2 over x squared. Now, as x goes to negative infinity or positive infinity, this gets in so large that this just becomes zero. We say it just goes to zero. It's a target value. This goes to zero. This goes to zero. And I'm just left with, you know, these become zero. I'm just left with two through two thirds. So the rules that you have from algebra two is that if the power in the denominator is equal to the power in the numerator, then it's a ratio of leading coefficients. If the power in the denominator is larger than the power in the numerator, as in my last example, then it's at zero. And if the power in the numerator is greater, then it is uh, it grows without bound. It doesn't have a horizontal asymptote. In algebra two, you talked about slant asymptotes. Um, we don't deal with slant asymptotes in this class. You don't have to worry about that. They could ask you about horizontal asymptotes and vertical asymptotes, and they could ask you about um, they could ask you um, um, to evaluate the limits as I approach infinity and negative infinity and stuff like that, and, and make you sketch the graph. But they're not going to um, they're not going to make you do the slant asymptotes. Um, let's just take a, a little, little quick example, uh, two other examples, one about horizontal asymptotes, one about vertical asymptotes. Let's say I have something like this. We've talked about vertical for, for a second, but let's just say that I had f of x equals um, x plus 3 over x squared minus 9. And I want to talk about the vertical asymptotes of this. So the vertical asymptotes, remember, are going to be where the denominator is zero. But in this case, in this particular case, we're going to have a point of discontinuity. So I just want to factor that denominator. There's lots of factoring algebra. If, you're, if you have a hard time with the factoring, you know, make sure you see me in class and get it all cleaned up because that's the part that gets people in trouble. So in this problem, what I want to do is I want to rewrite f of x this way. And then I'm going to cancel the x plus 3. So I'm going to cancel this with this. And that's a point of discontinuity. The, the, the derivative is not going to be defined at that point of discontinuity, but you can cancel it out and rewrite this equation as 1 over x minus 3. And then for our vertical asymptote, our vertical asymptote, we just want to take x minus 3, set it equal to 0, and at x equals 3, that's where my vertical asymptote is. And vertical and horizontal asymptotes are equations of lines, so make sure that you um, put it down as an equation of line. You've got to be careful about that. Um, all right, so horizontal vertical asymptotes, and then the one other thing that people tend to get a little bit confused on are if I throw a square root in there and I have a square root with a, with a limit to infinity, sometimes that gets a little bit tricky, and you have to be careful about this. Let's say I have a function like f of x equals the square root of 9x squared plus 2 over 4x minus 3. And um, so, essentially, in this problem, what ends up happening, um, you know, technically, is that um, as my x value, if I were to take the limit, let's say as x goes to positive infinity of, of this equation, of f of x, as x grows without bound, adding 2 to it is really not going to matter. It, this is going to become inconsequential. So essentially we say oh, this is really equivalent to the square root of 9x squared over 4x because whether I'm subtracting 3 or adding 2 doesn't really matter as x goes to infinity gets that large. Then the square root of 9x squared is simply 3x. So I get 3x over 4x which then will reduce to 3 fourths. So this, this limit as x goes to infinity is just going to converge to 3 fourths. 
Um, it can get a little bit confusing because if you're going to the negative infinity, then you've got to make sure you take this negative square root. And I'll, I'll do some stuff in class tomorrow to try to clarify that concept. This is the one little thing that people tend to get a little bit confused on. So, all right, so some vertical asymptotes, some horizontal asymptotes, some limits to infinity. Make sure you get the factoring cleaned up. Make sure you get your square roots answered um, when you have those questions tomorrow. This should take care of the next couple of assignments. Best of luck. Um, and, and we'll, we'll meet back in class and talk about it some more.